Botafogo tied with Nova Iguaçu this past weekend after opening a 2-0 lead, bringing some remnants of 2023. Luiz Henrique also arrived at the club. Botafogo signed Alain. Botafogo signed Damian Suarez and Flamengo Derby this Wednesday. Let's talk all about that in English because this is glorious Botafogo and you can only get this kind of stuff here. So let's talk about it. I will be periodically checking my phone because I am checking on the Jeffinho and John injury. I I was told that it was going to come out. So I am... Uh, uh oh, uh, uh. yeah. So it seems like the club wants to break out the news, eh, and it doesn't seem very good. So let's start with the Jeffinho and John injury. I haven't heard anything about John's injury. As far as Jeffinho is concerned, I am not hopeful. The club needs to come out and give out the news, regardless of what it is, but um, it may be tonight or or it may be tomorrow morning. Um, let's see, let's hope, but I, I have a feeling that it's not something, uh, very simple. I think it's something that's complex and it may or may not take out the player for the rest of the season. Let's hope that is not the case. On Saturday, Botafogo tied with Nova Iguaçu after a okay first half and a disastrous, once again, it's, our, it's starting to seem like routine where Botafogo does not have a really good second half. So much so that Nova Iguaçu tied after Botafogo opened up a 2-0 score from Eduardo and Lucas Haute with a header um, still in the first half. Nova Iguaçu scored very quickly after the second goal by Eduardo from a penalty kick that the VAR ended up checking and it was confirmed a penalty on Junior Santos, which, by the way, he's been doing phenomenal. And um, not long after that, after that first goal, Nova Iguaçu tied the match. Uh, both goals by the same guy, the, their number nine, their striker, which seemed to be at least competent enough to put the goals in the back of the net, which is something that we had chances on, but we didn't do. After the game, uh, Thiago Nunes gave a press conference and he talked about how the team needs to have some maturity, how the team needs to be able to handle these types of situations. And it seemed very clear that he was sending a message out to the players, a message out to the squads, to the squad saying that maybe some of the past, you know, the 2023 season towards the end, maybe affecting some of the, the, the psyche of the players. And if that's the case, then he's going to make changes. So it seems like a direct message towards some of the players in the squad. So you will see how Botafogo lines up this coming Wednesday. So let's segue into that. Let's see how Botafogo lines up this Wednesday against Flamengo. This is going to be the very first real test that the club is going to have Flamengo had a preseason in the United States. Their preseason was deemed somewhat successful, but um, we will see. We'll see how Botafogo lines up. I don't know yet who is going to play. All I know for sure is that Jeffinho and John will not be playing. Savarino was seen today uh, practicing with the club. Luis Enrique practiced with the club, and the player arrived this past Sunday. He spoke as a Botafogo player. And then yesterday, and then today, today's Monday, uh, and then today there were some pictures of Luis Enrique out at the Botafogo store buying a, outfits for his family. And there were some pictures of Luis Enrique at the Lonier Training Center practicing with his teammates. On Sunday, Luis Enrique said that he was ready to play this Wednesday against Flamengo. He was well, both physically and he was, you know, he's, he's been practicing at the Real Betis camp so I, I think that he's going to be ready i don't know if he's going to start because he hasn't been playing with his teammates today was a first session tomorrow is going to be the second session and then wednesday so most likely Luis Enrique will not play as a starter wednesday but i can see him coming on as a, in the second half for botafogo i mean it'd be a great debut just imagining debuting for the club 
in a huge derby, perhaps the biggest derby uh, the Botafogo has, which is Flamengo. It would be great to see Luis Enrique and hopefully score the first goal with the Botafogo jersey. Botafogo signed right back Damian Suarez. The player was playing a Getafe and he's transferring from La Liga into the Brasileirão to take over the right back spot for Botafogo. There was a big celebration at the club yesterday. He spent nine years at the Spanish club and he's, he's coming back home. Uh, to South America, staying closer to his family. The Uruguayan right back is known for being super aggressive. The the fans of the other teams absolutely hate the guy because they always call him, you know, too violent, too aggressive. But as far as I'm concerned, we need somebody like like Damian Suarez at Botafogo. So welcome, Damian Suarez. You're going to be well received and. You should just be able to come in and put that right back position right under your arm and take it. It is yours. Um, nobody plays nine years at the La Liga if they just weren't not any good. So at the very least, Damian Suarez comes to, to be one of the main aims for right back or any club in the Brazilian. Um, it's great to see an experienced defender, a guy that's always was considered a leader inside the pitch for other clubs and the very much awaited news Alain Alain Marques signed a pre-contract with Botafogo and he is an Alvinegro player for the year of 2024 contract of two years until 2026 now the thing is is Alan gonna come now or is Alan gonna come at the end of or at the beginning of the second transfer window which would be June July because the club and Alwada, which is the club where Alan is at right now, they're trying to negotiate um, a release, an immediate release, so Alan and his family can come. There were talks that Alan had to convince, you know, convince some family members here and there, but that is not true. His family, his wife, everybody was wanting to come. And, you know, after after the signing of Luis and Hickey, it kind of seemed like that may have changed things. And, and it may it might as well have changed them because now he is a Botafogo player. I kind of knew about this last Friday. I had confirmation from some sources that Alan was going to be a Botafogo player. It was a done deal as of last Friday. So perhaps the contract was only signed today, but both parts agreed on everything on Friday, as far as I was told, as far as I know. So welcome, Alan. Alan is a Botafogo supporter. That is his boyhood club, a, a club that he grew up loving and watching and cheering for. And just like Gabriel Pires last season and Rafael, that remains in this season, and like other players inside the squad, we're going to have another supporter representing inside the pitch, wearing the badge and playing for the badge. Alan's coming to be one of the best, if not the best, box-to-box -box or CDM, central defensive midfielder, of the entire tournament. I mean, Alan has incredible numbers, incredible numbers. He's got assists, he's got decisive passes he's got tackles i mean he doubles or triples the amount of uh, recoveries that players in his position in our in our squad have he doubles or triples those numbers throughout his career and in this current season that he's playing right now so fantastic signing john texter stings true to his word saying about the focus was going to come aggressive which it is true but the focus got uh, Barbosa, Alte, Sabarino, Jefinho, Damian Suarez, Luiz Henrique, Alain, Pablo, John. I, I don't know if I'm missing some names, but those are a lot of transfers. I mean, it is shaping the starting 11 almost brand new. Uh, I think besides Chiquinho Suarez and Eduardo, maybe, and Marçal, maybe, but Hugo's doing really well right now, or well enough, better than Marçal, which is not saying very much. I think Marçal is having the worst period of his entire career, of his entire career. I mean, two injuries in, you know, two months, 
uh, not playing well, not doing well, being booed. Even Mahalon Freitas have have you know he's at, he has had good games. I mean, he played well these last couple of matches, and the supporters are even not booing him as much and starting to kind of let off, you know, let the the the, the foot off the the gas pedal there, as far as being aggressive towards Mahalon Freitas, which. It doesn't help inside the 90 minutes booing a player. It doesn't help boo it after the match. But during the match, it does not help booing a player. But I get it. The supporters are trying to send a message. So, yeah, it seems like the club is... Not it seems. John Texer stayed true to his word. And there's one more signing to be made, according to my friend Thiago Franklin. There's one more signing that Botafogo is looking at making before the closure of this window. We will see if there's actual... If there's a devastating injury to Jeffine, then perhaps two. Or if there's an opportunity maybe to sign a left back and a central defensive midfielder, I think it would be between one of those three positions. If I had to guess, it would be another center mid or center attacking mid. Once again, Botafogo plays Flamengo this Wednesday at a derby, the biggest derby of the year, the first derby of the year. And the match kicks off at 6.30 p.m. And you can check on my social media for the match poster. I'll, I will be posting that there on Instagram. I'll be posting there on Twitter as well. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you are on Instagram or X, make sure to follow me. Make sure to hit all the, the bell for all the notifications so you don't miss any videos, any posts, any updates that might happen. We will see what actually happened with Jeff Inu and John, hopefully tomorrow at the latest. I'll catch you guys after the game on Wednesday. I'm going to be making a video talking about it, possibly releasing on Thursday.